Hey everyone, this is Spitting Fire and I'm your girl Ari Jackson. I'm not bringing a rant with you today because I wanted to put some out here in the atmosphere. And uh, this is not um, a shot out or shade anybody. This is just real. This is just real and as real can get. And it's to all the bloggers and subscribers. To everyone. Those I talk to, those I no longer talk to, um, those who I, whatever, I don't even interact with. This is to everyone that, you know, on this side or whatever. First of all, when I came on the scene during the rats and everything, um, my whole purpose of spitting fire, again, is to fight injustice of what's going on with our black men. And then there was a platform which was separate because it was R. Kelly. And then the subscribers couldn't get enough of the platform in pertaining to R. Kelly. Okay. And then Bill Cosby added a little bit of touch, but not as big as R. Kelly. And we know why. Okay. And then we had all these people, you know, with this women's liberation coming out and speaking against men. And we was letting it be known that women lie too and that these laws that are changed is one-sided. And then I tried to come out on my platform to let people know who have men in their family that their men are under attack. Because if they can do things like this with R. Kelly, the average man ain't got nothing coming in. We already been under attack with the police. And this is why I show the Eric Gardners and the Trayvon Martins and, you know, the Mike Browns. Because of the simple fact is, I want to remind people that we already under attack with the police with the racial profiling. And then we under attack with our celebrity men who have made it out of the ghetto or made it in, and put their stamp on the world. And they're trying to take down their legacy. And this is the type of thing that should be unacceptable. And I want men to step up and fight because the fight is yours. And you now have a bigger pow power because the women liberation movement have some men bagging them, but not advocates like women are against the men that are being attacked because they have sons. I have talked to other bloggers say, hey, I don't want it to be my son. I'm more worried about my son today than I am my daughter. And back in the day, in my day, it used to be you was worried about your daughter because you didn't want her to get pregnant, you didn't want her to do this. But now times has changed. Now the men are the one who have to be secured and nurtured and, and protected and everything else. And then the masculinity of black men is in question because they're trying to put them more in dresses and they're trying to say sexual things with men on men's sex is okay and, and trans um, love, transgender love is okay and it's the same. And they're putting all this false narrative and everything out here. And this is the type of stuff that I wanted my platform and my show to be about. And then there were bloggers beefing with other bloggers, but they continuously say they did for R. Kelly. And I'm not understanding that logic. I don't. I don't understand that logic. And I was always the type of blogger that I will call you out. I don't care. I don't care what kind of fat names, ugly, or whatever you call me, I will call you out. And then there was one particular blogger that I got into it with. And on my stance, I felt like my maturity was mistaken for weakness. And that's one of the things that I don't want any other blogger to misunderstand. Do not take my maturity level for weakness. Because I don't respond to name calling right then and there. Or I don't respond to your subliminals or whatever. Don't take that for weakness. My mouth and my tongue is just as sharp as the next woman's. And I can be just as ghetto and everything else. I choose not to be, for one, my maturity level, my age level. I have a family. And I you want to use my mouth for something positive. And I am accepting to people disagreeing with me. I have no problem with that. If we all agree and you agree, you're not telling the truth. So there were conversations I had behind the scenes that I disagreed with other bloggers. Even about other bloggers. Or people that is on YouTube. 
You understand? There were people that I've had heated conversations with that they wanted to get off the phone because they were frustrated or they didn't like one particular blogger. And then I said, well, what about this person, this person? And they just keep going back to this one particular person that I'm not even speaking of. So I am the type of person that if you have a problem with me, I wouldn't mind talking to you outside of the net. But then I see a lot of bloggers don't do that. What they do is they say, oh, we don't have a problem. We all good. Then they go to the internet with subliminals. I don't do that. I told you Spitting Fire is the realest person out here on this internet. And it's the truth. I do not sit up there and get mad when people disagree with me. You have your own mindset. I do not feel like you can't talk to someone because I fell out with someone. You have your own mindset. I'm a grown woman. I can take it for myself. And I said that to people. I said, hey, if you cool with that person, fine. That ain't got nothing to do with us. I've said that because I meant that, because I hold my own. That's what I do. And ranting is a style of the show that I conduct myself, speaking to the world in which we know that it's cold, dark, and mysterious. And so I deliberately use cuss words, and this is why I do a verbal disclaimer at the beginning of all my videos, warning people that their children under the age of 18 should not be listening to the rant. But what I will not do, and what I will not stand for, is if you cannot talk to me when I ask you questions, and you say, no, that's not it, no, we don't have no issue, and then you come on the next thing subliminals, I'm going to need you to shut that down. Because what a grown person does, and I had this conversation with a person yesterday. I said, why didn't you talk to this person off the net? And this is no shout to that person. It's just that that's what grown people do. So this is what I do. I like to confront people head on. I like to see people. I like to talk to people. And when you refuse to talk to me and you refuse to see me, then you're not on my level to even argue with or continue to beef with. So I shut it down. So I agree that you don't say my name, I don't say your name, or you don't mention me and I don't mention you. And it's not to the person who I got into it with a few weeks ago. This is just talking in general. So I don't want that person to think that I'm coming at them. I'm just using this little segment as an example. And what that did was that gave a line of respect that we can no longer agree, that we no longer can get along. Not just agree, but get along. Because I don't mind disagreeing. But some people can't take the disagreeing. And if you can't take to get disagreeing and you got to get upset and call names, then we can't converse out here for this fight together. We can't do that. And that's understood and that's respected. See, and that's what I, I like. I like the fact that when I say it, the video, keep my name out your mouth and I would do the same. It wasn't the fact that it was beef. It was, okay, I'm going to shut this down because I'm not the type that go back and forth. I'm not. My platform is not built that way. It's built to train and to teach and to give everybody awareness out here about the injustice. My platform has been consistent from the beginning. So when people say, oh, you changed you this. No, I came on everybody's platform. If you see my videos, I put everybody name in my videos. Everyone. Even the ones I no longer deal with. Their name is in my video. I shouted everyone out. I don't not shoot people out because I'm mad at you or we don't get along. I don't do that. If you are for the fight against injustice, I will still shoot your name out because that's how I'm cut. And there's a blogger on here who I don't deal with anymore. And her name is still called out on the video and I didn't take the video out or edit it because of the simple fact is... If they're fighting against injustice or for R. Kelly, then their name stays on there. Whether I get along with them now or don't. Whether we speak now or don't. It's all about simple respect. But what you're not going to do is be younger than me and think that you can tell me who I can and can't talk to. Because I came on everybody's platform. And here's the thing with me. I know when I'm wanted and when I'm not wanted. And when I don't deal with somebody anymore, if I don't get along with you, if I say, look, you stay over there, I stay over here, I won't fuck with you, you don't fuck with me, that's what I mean. 
That's what I mean. And that means that I unsubscribe and I don't go on your platform to check nothing. That's the type of person I am. When I'm done with you and we no longer have a relationship, I will unsubscribe and I will check nothing of what you do. You're not your life, not your videos, not what you're saying. And then people will come to me and say, did you see this video? Did you see that video? I'm like, no, because I don't go over there. And I went as far as remove people platforms out the recommendations and trying to block them when I figure out how to block channels from my channel. I'm still learning this YouTube shit. So when I say stuff like that, I really mean it. I really mean it because I feel like there is no reason for me to say I don't, we not going to fuck with each other and I'm still watching you. That's narcissistic behavior. When I don't fuck with you, I don't fuck with you. So when you say you don't mess with me anymore, then that's what you do. Don't mess with me anymore. Don't come on my channel. Don't reply. Don't, re don't, don't comment. And then you can still keep your subliminals. You understand? You can still, sorry about the dog, y'all. You can still um, keep your subliminals. Because it's not necessary. It's not necessary. And so, I've always been consistent. So, in getting back to going on platforms. So when I come on people platforms, if I get the cold shoulder, I won't come back. I won't come back. Because I know that that person may be mad because I talked to this person over here. And they associate me with this person over here. I'm a grown woman. I'm almost 50. You can't associate with me with nobody. We all in different states. We are hundreds, if not thousands of miles from each other. You get where I'm going? So I talk to who I want to talk to and go on platforms of who I want to go on platforms to. I'm not going to be told at my age what I can and can't do. And definitely with somebody who I've been breathing this air longer than they have. You don't tell me that. That's, that's not how this works. Because I want you, I hope everybody understand how this works. See, the thing of it is, is what I see, is nobody respecting everybody's boundary. Nobody respects it. You can't do something to somebody else and do all this to somebody else, and then when they come back with a bang, it's all, oh, you, you the victim. You can't do that. If you go play tick for tack, play tick for tack. If this person has been quiet and, and been left and, and been not get engaging, that should be respected. And everybody beef. I don't want nobody ever taking up a spitting fire because I can hold my own and I hold it and address it the way I want to address it because I'm a grown woman because I don't go and I shut down getting into the cussing match. I've already put out a video where I'm cussing up a storm and I already put out of this video where I'm calling names. And then when I realized that was getting me out of my character and that this is not what my show is about and I got other people I deal with with the show, I represent everybody. So I'm not going to do that. That's not what I'm going to do. Then I address the subscribers that were being messy. And they know that they're messy. They like the mess. But that says who you are. See, let me explain something to you guys. Let me seriously, seriously explain something to you. And this is the part that I want you all to know. Okay. My daughter, when I tell my daughter about having good grades, I tell her this. I don't tell her she should have good grades because she can get a good job or she can get into a good college. I don't tell her that shit. Those are her awards or rewards for having good grades. Well, I tell her, and I want you bloggers and subscribers to understand this, because this is to all of you, especially the bloggers who send the subliminals. This is to all of you. 
So pay attention to this damn lesson I'm finna give you. Because if you're wise, you will get it. But if you childlike mind, you won't get it. So this is what I'm going to tell you. I teach my daughter to not only have good grades because she can get into college or she can get uh, a job. I teach her to have good grades because at the top of that report card and in that school file, it's her name. It's her name. So when they see your name, they see all these good grades under your name. And in your file that has your name on it, they see all the awards and honor rolls and, and all that that you have. And scholarships that you have in your file because it's under your name. And it has your name on it. Your name is everything. So even if I'm doing spit and fire, I stop getting into the cussing match because it's my name. It's a name of a brand and I represent it. And this is not what I want to represent my brand about. And when you sit up there and you support a lie under your name or you support something that's not true under your name, because you mad at somebody for talking to somebody else under your name. That says who you are. That represents your character. See, I'm not going to lie for anybody under spit and fire name or even my name. I'm just not going to do it because it represents who I am. And when you are a subscriber and you know that somebody is lying clearly, and you have to go in their thread and say, uh, that's not true. This person did this. This person said that. That person did that. And they still put it out there. That just represents who you are. When you go and support that because of your name. And your name, even if it's an alias name, is who you're representing. And when you sitting up there representing something under an alias name, it's still your name. Because it's still who you, you still you. So, I'm going to end this because I don't play down there. I'm not going to get into the subliminals. I'm not going to take your bait to get into a beefing match and all this and that. I'm not doing all that. So, stop. Stop. And, you know, the thing of it is, is when I'm not wanted somewhere, I will get the hint. Because nobody can tell me who I can and can't talk to. So, if you, you know, if you don't want to talk, I get the hint. I really do. I really get the hint. I've been on every, like I said before, I just mentioned it. I don't mean to sound like a broken record, but I'm going to say it again. I've been on everybody platform. Everyone. And if I come on your chat or whatever and I get the cold shoulder, I won't come back again. I don't get the acknowledgement and you know I got a platform, I don't come back again. Because I know you don't want me on your platform and that's cool. And that's fine. It's all about respect. Again. If you can respect everybody's boundaries, you wouldn't have this issue. It's all about respect. So when I go on somebody's platform, I say, hello, this has been fire. And you see me and you only acknowledge me, I won't come back. And I don't. That's respect. It ain't that I don't fuck with you. It's that I did try to fuck with you. And if you reject me because you think I've talked to this person, then I won't talk to you. At almost a half a century years old, nobody's going to tell me who I can and can't talk to. That's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. So stop. Don't tell me that we all in the clique and all that. We all hundreds and thousands of miles away from each other. Live in different states and different households. Got families and everything. So stop. You, you think. And then speaking of respect. It ain't just that you have to give respect to get respect. Who decides that? Who decides that you get the respect first in order for me to get the respect back? Who told people that? There is things that's called basic human respect. Just basic. Basic stuff. Just being a human being. Just basic stuff. Like respecting somebody's opinion. Basic stuff. Respecting somebody's 
relationships or business relationships or whatever. Basic stuff. Saying excuse me when you belch. Basic stuff. When someone opens the door and you say thank you. Basic stuff. There's just basic respect that people have. Just basic. Nothing personal. You don't get to just be rude to people because you be like, well, you got to respect me in order for me to respect you. Who says I got to respect you first? If everybody give just basic respect to everybody, everybody got a piece of respect. That's it. That's just the bottom line. So stop with that shit. Don't come back with that. Don't, I already know what you're going to say. Take it from somebody older who's trying to teach you something. Quit popping off at the mouth all the time and being hot-headed. That mouth and that mouth and that mouth. You young people with that mouth, if you close that and open your ears, you can get a lot more knowledge. But what I see out here on these YouTube streets is I see a lot of young people who have voices and have a good voice. And they can use it for good. See, that's why I like the way that I am. I still got a little feistiness in me, but I don't have the energy to keep it going on bullshit. I don't have that energy for that. I won't spend it on that. That's not what it's about. That's not what it's for. I'd rather spend it on helping something. Let me ask y'all something. And these are to the ones who pop, pop off, hot-headed, and everything. Have you guys ever thought that one day you're going to die? Going back to the name that I told you about why I tell my daughter. One day we all going to die. There's just one day we're going to die. Have you ever thought what someone can stand up and say about you? Have you ever thought what someone, not the eulogy of the pastor, what someone can say about you? Your memory and your legacy. So when you spit words out here, you don't want nobody to say, oh, they popped off at the mouth. She was this. She was that. You don't want that. You want them to say you help people. She was loving and caring. I went to a funeral a few years ago. The, I'm telling you guys, funerals has always been the thing I hate. I hate funerals. They make, you know, I just hate them. The sadness, I hate them. And I don't, I, say, I always told my mother, I said, I don't know why they call it a celebration when we, in so much pain. This don't feel like a celebration. I hate them. And then my mama said, it, is a it can't be a celebration. It's supposed to be a celebration. Why do we say celebrate the life of when we in pain? And I didn't get it. And this was just a few years ago. I didn't get it. Still didn't get it. To this day, don't get it. But then I went to, but now I get it. I went to a funeral. I went to a funeral of a lady who used to babysit me when I was a little girl. And I was a little girl that when my mother left the house, I fell out. I was one of them kids. Like, I don't want my mama leaving me. I fell the fuck out. But when this particular babysitter babysat me, I was like, bye, mama. Because <laughs> I loved her so much. I loved her babysitting me so much. Because in the midst of my mama leaving, when she was babysitting me, I felt loved. As a baby, I felt love. You, the, the feeling of taking care of kids when they feel love is genuine. Kids know when it's genuine and when it's fake. They just know. And I felt the love. I felt that if I was ever in her care, God forbid something happened to my mama, I knew she loved me. It just was genuine. Well, anywho... She passed away. And this babysitter will always go to house to house and house to house and say 
stay with people. And every time she would stay with people, she hadn't, she didn't have her own place. She had a place where she kept the majority of her clothes, which was her mama house, but she always would stay with people. So she would stay with my mama for about a month or two, then move with somebody else for about a month or two, then move with somebody else for about a month or two. She would go all around till she make it back. She keep on making circles. And she was the cleanest woman ever. When I say you can eat eggs off the floor, you can eat scrubber eggs off the floor. She was so clean. I'm talking rag on the floor, vinegar, wipe the floor clean type of person. And she passed away. Moving fast forward, she had passed away. And I was like, wow, I remember all the good times. I had nothing but good memories about her. Nothing but good memories about her. And when people, and I told y'all she was going house to house, everybody said the same thing I said on how she was loving and caring and partying and clean and this and that. And it was truly a celebration. There was no crying in the room, and we were laughing, and we were hugging. We was like, yeah, I remember she was. It was truly a celebration, and we partied in her name. We partied in her name because she left a stick in everybody's life on her journey going house to house to house, to house. She put love in everybody's heart. And cleanliness is next to godliness. So it was an act of God that was in her to why she was going house to house. Like when Jesus was on the journey going places to places. That was her journey. And you never know what the big picture is until that person is gone. And you can actually see how they impacted your life. And she didn't get into bickering. She didn't get into you don't like this person, so I ain't talking to this. She didn't get into none of that. The people who hated each other, she went to everybody's houses. So if I was beefing with this person and they was beefing with me, she went to their house and spread love and went to my house and spread love. And the day of rejoicing, everybody was hugging, even the people you were beefing with. So I say that to say, I am not finna take no subliminals. I'm not going to take the bait on that. You don't know what mark you leave out here in the universe. So use your platform for something positive as opposed to taking some blemish at me or anybody else. And when you hate somebody that much, you allowing them to take precedence over your life. So every time they put out something, you got to come right back. They got so much control over your life. But one day your life will end. One day your life will end, just like my babysitters. And you have to ask yourself, what can someone say about me? Peace!